take you through my little journey. Um, I hope you enjoy it. You are the masterpiece of your own life. You are the Michelangelo of your own life. The David you are sculpturing is you. So there we were holding our amazing new bundle of joy. We were so excited. It had taken us so many years to get him. And uh, <laughs> I was holding him in my hands, literally, as you can see. And I remember saying to him, I'm going to build you the best life ever. You're never, ever going to want for anything. So George was our miracle baby. It took us seven and a half years to get him. We had many, many challenges. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it was incredible. And he came along and three days later, we went home as a family. We were so excited. And we thought this was gonna be our happy ending that we really, really wanted. But actually, it was the start of a really big battle for my family. As we settled into our new routine, um, my anxiety began to overtake my life. Um, I couldn't sleep and I couldn't stop staring at him. That's kind of normal. <laughs> but I, I was just checking, he was breathing all the time. And what I didn't realize was actually that I was suffering with postnatal depression. Um, so that was a really big battle for me. And just to sort of top it all off, a few days later, Graham received a letter from my lovely husband in the post, it's over there. <laughs> And um, his job decided to write to him to tell him that after 10 years, he no longer had a job. And they knew we'd just had a baby. So that was a complete and utter shock. And for the first time ever, I saw my husband, who was my rock, break down and cry. I knew then that I had to make a change. I knew then that the power was in my hands because at that time we had no money, no jobs and a new baby, so somebody had to do something. <laughs> I thought, right. <laughs> so, after a few months, actually, we received the most best help ever and we both got really strong again. Graham got a new job, our depression started to lift my uh, postnatal depression was back under control and I was ready to go and show this gorgeous little boy to the world. So that was it, packed my bag, off I went to my first baby group. <laughs> and I tell you what, I was so nervous, I thought to myself, what are they going to think of me? But anyway, I went and little did I know, I just met my forever family and my life was going to change for the better and it did. It, they were the most amazing bunch of ladies. So, I began my journey officially in November 2013. And it was amazing, I loved it. I, I was so proud to be part of Forever. I spoke to everybody about it. I think I even breathed aloe. Um, it was incredible. <laughs> um, I retailed, I built a business just like that. It was fantastic. But you know what really hurt? And I think a lot of us in this room are probably faced with this, is that my friends and family didn't support me. I had absolutely no support. They all told me it was a scam, pyramid. You know, we've all heard it. And um, do you know, I turned around and I said to him, just watch me, I can do this. <laughs> so in 2014, my little George, became seriously ill. And me and George lived in hospital for three weeks. And it was whilst I was watching him trying to breathe and trying to survive that I made another decision that, that right there, because those nights were so long and really, really lonely. And I thought, you know what? I can't ever leave this little boy. I can never, ever leave his side again. And that was it. I said to myself, I am making my business work. And I knew we was in hospital for a long time, so I thought, right, I am gonna make this work. I am gonna sack my boss, I'm never going back, and I'm just gonna do it. So that I did, I worked 
Every moment he was asleep, I worked. That was it. I used the, the nurses' offices. I just, I was on the phone. Some of my team even come to visit me in Georgian Hospital. It was amazing. And do you know what? I hit my first promotion um, at his bedside in hospital. I got to supervisor. <laughs> So three to four weeks later, George came home. Life continued. And do you know what? They say, don't they, the best things come in small packages. And there he is. <laughs> So we got home, life went on, Graham was working, I was really happy. And I knew my next goal was manager. I flew to assistant manager, that was brilliant, on the stage, meeting Bob, loved it. My team was growing, retail was growing, I was happy. So I knew it, manager, that's my goal. But then, little, you know, little things started to happen, like a few team members started leaving, and a few people that I thought were gonna be manager went, and I was a little bit, surprised really and uh, I, I thought everybody that joined my business was like me and really wanted it and but actually I was a little bit wrong not everybody wants it as much as you and so um, as my team started to fall away I, I, I basically had a big hissy fit and um, <laughs> I thought everybody was rubbish and I thought oh what's wrong with them all but you know what, actually, <laughs> what had happened, even though right at the beginning, even through all the struggle, I, you know, I'd been to the BPs, the Sizzles, Success Day, um, I probably wasn't attending them as much as I should do. So I kind of took a look in the mirror and I thought, I think it's me, I think it's me. I think I, I'm the problem here, I've got to change. And um, I was lying on my bed, still having my hissy fit, and uh, I looked around my room, I do remember this moment, and I, I looked at all these books on my bedside table, I thought they looked really nice. <laughs> they were the books that I had been recommended to read throughout the past year. And uh, I thought, well, I better read one now, don't you? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so this is where my journey really, really changed. I picked up this book, just the top one. I thought, okay, here it goes. It's called Being the Change by Ken Dunn. I don't know if you've read it, but oh my God, it is an amazing book, Being the Change by Ken Dunn. The bit that stuck out for me, and they say sometimes when you read a book, certain things will stick out to you when you need that information in your life. And he spoke about his journey building his businesses, and actually he needed different mentors in his life for different stages so that he could get through. And you know, I <laughs> sat up in my bed and I thought, that's it. I need a new coach. I need to find somebody that inspires me and to help me through my journey. And I got up and I rushed to the front room and I got on my little laptop and I messaged this lady. And uh, I shook, I thought, oh my God, she's gonna tell me she only works with clever people or like, you know, really posh people, because you can tell I'm definitely not posh. And, uh, and I thought, oh, she's gonna tell me no, but I thought, no, press send, and I sent it. And she come back, she of course I'll help you. I was oh my God. And I did cry a bit. I was like, this is it. I see it, I'm there, we can do it. And do you know what? This amazing lady has changed my life. We live at least four hours apart, so we can't actually sort of meet up and do coffees and stuff, which is a shame, but we meet at all events. But we work together um, day by day, week by week via Skype. And she, I, I listened, I became a student again. If she said to me to read a book, I read a book. If she said to me, go to your BPs, if you, you know, you've got to go to at least two a week, I went. And I got to manage her in six months. I was so happy. <laughs> it was brilliant. Standing on this stage as well, actually it was London, sorry. And, uh, it was the happiest time of my life. I had Graham with me, my wonderful husband. I had little George in my hands. And oh God, the feeling was incredible. When I hit manager that day, I remember, I think I just cried all day. I was just so grateful to my team. They were incredible and all the support that I'd received. And do you know what the best thing was though? Was actually telling and showing everybody that told me I couldn't do it, that I'd done it. That was the best feeling. I had sat 
the boss, I'd replaced my income, and I'd never left George's side ever. Now, as you can see, there's my little pickle, George, and my beautiful husband. And you know what? George is not your typical three-year-old. If he was here right now, he'd be having a full-blown conversation. He would love it. He's so super confident. He loves life. And you know what? I really feel that because of forever, I know I've done one thing right now. I know that little boy there, or up there, <laughs> he does think he's Superman. He thinks, he, he knows he can succeed in life. He just has that. He, if you tell him, do you want to try this? Yeah, of course, no worries. Yeah, he's just got the confidence, and I know I've done that, self-love, and he's got self-belief, and that's a big thing in life, especially at three years old. <laughs> so, fast forward to 2016. My team has continued to grow, and I love my business, my heart, my soul. Is, is in my business. I do everything I can to keep growing it, but it doesn't mean that I don't face difficulties. Um, my business has dipped a little bit in the summer, but it's back up again now. And that is thanks to all the new skills I've learned. So you're all here today all to learn new stuff. Do it. Just be a student again. It, it's so important. And also, I think, when I started my journey, although everybody was telling me I couldn't do it, and I said I will, a little bit of me was a little bit unsure. But do you know what now? I know that I'm a manager now, and I know that within the next few years, I'll be soaring, and it will just go on and on and on. And it's an incredible feeling to feel that confident. So, wow. <laughs> now, one thing that I do do, because I truly... I'm so grateful for the love and support that I've had from forever. I literally have a new family. I have brand new best friends and it's just amazing. Um, every Friday, I go to Sainsbury's or I go around some people, on, believe it or not, my Facebook's really huge, right? So every week I put out a plea for donations for food. And um, I help out a charity called Sutton Nightwatch. So every Friday afternoon, I'm always in my kitchen and I'm cooking. Um, and what we do, I take all my food down and we feed the homeless um, every single week. Um, we're trying to do it five days a week because these people deserve it. These people are just like you and me, but they just got forgotten and they just slipped through the net. And do you know what? They love it when I just have a conversation with them. There's no judgment there. They adore it. So that's just like the little tent that we've got behind the station. And um, they come along with their bags and we, uh, we, we feed them and they go home to their tents or under the, the stairwell. It's just really sad. So, the, the next bit I wanted to share with you was start to let you know that I am really excited for 2017. Who's excited for 2017? <laughs> Wicked, love it. And you know what, you've got to keep that excitement going because you know what, you're going to find and have really hard times, it doesn't matter. I've got through them and I'm still standing here. I didn't go to another company, oh no, no. I'm forever, I am forever through and through, that is it. Damn right, yes, you've got to have the belief. Now, this is uh, the next bit I wanted to share with you, okay? Um, remember, I didn't read books at the start of my journey. Well, actually, I love them now. And I, I try and read at least one a month. So I picked out my five favourite books for you um, and a little quote that each of them have got. So this is The Greatest Prospect in the World by Ken Dunn. It is a must. Please, please read it. Um, get in the river even when you don't want to. So what does that mean to me? After all those no's, after all that negativity, after all those horrible people just telling me I couldn't do it, I still got in that river and I swam and I still found my way and I still succeeded. So keep going. The next book. And actually, he's online. Who knows Dave O'Connor? Yeah, we love our bit of old Dave. He's lovely. He's great. I log on to all of his free webinars and trainings, and I read his book. I listen to his audios. They're fantastic. And now, I didn't quite understand this bit when um, he first spoke about it. So how you start your day can make or break your day. So I don't know about you, but when, <laughs> in the early days, I'd get up, and I'd obviously have the baby to deal with, and I'd be on social media trying to reply to 100 people, and then, I don't know, I'd 
I've walked the dog and I've been a complete real mess actually. But what Dave O'Connor teaches you is that you need a morning routine and you need to stop answering your phone and you need to stop doing social media as soon as you get up. You need to have your routine. You need to set your three most important goals for that day. And then once you've done your goals, starting with the hardest, obviously, then go on social media. But I'll tell you what, by having an amazing morning routine, you will feel so much more in control of your day. And obviously, gratitude. Um, without doubt, thank, you know, be thankful for where you are now, what you have in life right now. That's what's important. And now you can add to it with forever being your vehicle. Being the Change by Ken Dunn. I've actually got some really good photos here, actually. So it seems I love my Ken Dunn at the moment. But seek out coaches and mentors who are where you want to be and be open and willing to listen. So really, really simple. If you're a little bit stuck, there's loads of people out there that's going to help you. But just keep looking and keep asking. And there are some of my coaches and people that inspire me. We've got Andy Waring, we've got Jane Leach, um, and we've got some of the managers in the wider team, so it's incredible. Screw It, Let's Do It by Richard Branson. Wicked book. Loved the title. That's what attracted me. I'm a true sapphire. Um, I believed I could do it and I would do it. If something is what you really want to do, just do it. So do you know what? Find your why and really, really go for it. Don't listen to the naysayers. And finally, Who Moved My Cheese? The most teeny tiny little book and a funny title. Uh, Move with the cheese and enjoy it. So this is just one of the many quotes in this book. Incredible. So you know what? Life changes, people change, business change. Go with it and enjoy it. So that is all from me. So thank you ever so much for listening. And go and rock 2017. <laughs> Woo